mail because we do generate a lot of mail and we put out a lot of mail and Rick did as many many favors whatever I ask him he never said no to me Neil he always did it and he did it with a good attitude a smile on his face a great kid and he was tragically killed in an automobile accident last night and everyone here in the building is uh, feeling a, a definite feeling of loss this morning and we certainly will miss him very much Rick Sampson who um, sort of a did a did a lot of fa you know everything we needed whatever we needed he would do yeah. he would jump yeah, he right in guy. and do yeah and his well we sent along our sympathy to his uh, family and to all of his friends and uh, as you said we'll miss him around here we sure will anyway um, we got so many things to talk about and some of them are pretty depressing too including these morons with their pit bulls. I know some other people have been talking about that, and I've, we've done a lot of shows on that. In fact, uh, radio talk shows have done so many programs on pit bulls over the years, it's become another one of those um, tried-and-true topics. And the sad part of it is that uh, they don't do anything about it. That's the pathetic part. And I was appalled last night on CNN. I, or no, it was on, I'm sorry, it was on um, CBS, on Channel 4 News at 11 o'clock, and they showed the uh, footage from the, uh, I guess it's KNXT in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. with this crazy woman out there. I mean, you talk about a redneck. She's the definitive uh, pit bull owner, this big, grotesque, uh, pathetic woman. And it wasn't bad enough that the first guy got mauled, but then when the woman from Animal Control went out there, uh, they showed the footage. They uh, showed the tape, and yeah. they showed the dog. Uh, you know, she was threatening her, and, well, you better get out of here, or the dog's going to get out again. And sure enough, she just opened the door far enough, and the dog ran out and attacked this woman and ripped her hand up. And... And then uh, this morning, first thing I saw when I got off uh, was uh, the story on Channel 7 about the cameraman's daughter mm -hmm. who got mauled by the pit bull down here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I've said for a long time, pit bulls and their owners ought to be destroyed. You know, that's basically the way I feel about it. I mean, there's a certain mentality there. But I'll get into that, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later was on. Was it lead story on 4 last night? First story? I think it might have been. I think it was. And then uh, the Today Show this morning with uh, Bryant Gumbel whose voice reached new highs this morning at various times during the show, uh, they had a little segment about the FCC ruling, which I thought I'd mention because some of you may have seen it. And uh, they had Diane Calori on again from the FCC. Boy, she is, I hope they keep bringing her out everywhere because she's pathetic. And they had a guy named uh, Barry Lynn, which is great. I like people that have two first names. And they had Barry Lynn from the ACLU on. And of course, they're challenging the FCC ruling on so-called indecent speech. And again, she gave absolutely uh, all kinds of double talk, and he really put her to shame, even though the segment was very short, and they showed a little bit of George Carlin. And, um, you know, he made an ass out of her. And the bottom line of the whole thing was that they still can't define what they're talking about. She did all kinds of double talk about, well, you know, you're carrying it too far, and we're not uh, suggesting that all sexual innuendo or double entendre is uh, actionable. In fact, most of what the Howard Stern stuff we heard was okay. It was just certain things. But they won't tell us what the certain things were, see? So they want you to continue playing the guessing game. Which certain things were actionable? They won't tell us. And if you haven't sent in for so far, by the way, this Friday... We're, and I know originally I had said by the 4th of July we're going to wrap this thing up and, uh, you know, march on Washington. But that just wasn't giving us enough time. And there's no sense in doing it, uh, you know, too quickly or having any sense of urgency because, obviously, you know, we've got a lot of time to carry this thing on. And rather than just wrap it up now with about thirty or 40,000 signatures and saying this is the best we can do, we're, you know, moving onward and upward. And this Friday we're going to have two pages, two full pages, the centerfold. No pictures now, but mm -mm. in fact, we could add a picture of you. That would have gotten a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Or or a picture with my name under it, just of... Uh, <laughs> no, I think the picture with your face uh, would have gotten a lot of attention. The, pic the picture of the guy off the Zeta radio guide. We oh, that would have gotten a lot there. of attention for most radio broadcasters, because you know most of them, right? They yeah. don't want to admit it, but... Put my name under it. Or we could have used the picture from the Herald this morning, from uh, page 2B in the local section... Sean Padgett is in the pool at the Clevelander Hotel on Miami Beach. And if you're listening, Sean, we're going to be giving the numbers shortly. But anyway... So you uh, finally found something in the Herald you like. Worth, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well worth a quarter. I'd spend a quarter <laughs> for that. But anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, the ad this Friday. And, of course, uh, you folks in the general pubic out there, you're not going to be able to get it. Because uh, unless you're a radio fanatic and subscribe to it, which is right. unlikely. Groupy. Uh, but R&R, &R, Radio and Records, has really replaced Billboard. I mean, only stodgy old silly people read Billboard magazine now. And people who are, you know, looking for uh, jobs in 
Tacoma, Washington, or uh, Evansville, Illinois, little tiny markets read broadcasting. All the good jobs are in R&R, which sure. is why everybody in the business reads it, mm -hmm. and why they don't let us get it here in the building. <laughs> oh, that's true. You never see it come into this building, do you? Not on Once this Once in side. a while, somebody will sneak it in a plain brown envelope. Not on this side of the building. No, but we never get to see it back here because they have all the good jobs in it. <laughs> but anyway, we have the centerfold, two full pages, and the ad is geared toward all the radio broadcasters. And, you know, basically the essence is what the hell are you doing about this to fight censorship and defend free speech? And uh, if this doesn't do it, nothing will in terms of really getting some uh, national uh, involvement on this, getting everybody to write to their congressman. Well, every radio station in the country will see the ad. And by the way, this is a piece of good news. The Senate avoided a showdown with President Reagan today on, and this is kind of a backhanded good news, on his veto of the Fairness Doctrine bill that would have made it law. Democratic leader Robert Byrd, faced with almost certain defeat, first refused the Republicans a set time for a vote on overriding the veto. Then he had the bill routed to the Senate Commerce Committee under the chairmanship of South Carolina Democrat Ernest Hollings, and uh, they approved a motion to send the disputed legislation to committee where they're going to you know, keep it hanging until they think they have enough votes to pass it, but it can hang there for an eternity. So at least for the present time, the Fairness Doctrine is still a provision of the FCC, but it's not law as mandated by Congress. So right. for once, Reagan did something right by accident. You know, if you're in there long enough, I mean, sooner or later you're going to do something right. <laughs> In fact, there is getting to be a distinct similarity between uh, Ronald Reagan and the presidency only every other Thursday for about five minutes, and that's it. That's the end of it. So anyway, that's what we're doing, and if you haven't sent your name and address to so far yet, you know, we have two things to point out. Number one, what the hell are you waiting for? And number two, the address is so far P.O. Box 2214, Miami 33055. All you've got to do is send us your name and address. We supply the postage on the postcards. I mean, we've done everything except sign your name for you, everything humanly and legally possible. And all the cards are printed up already for you to send to your representatives and senators, and you just have to sign them and drop them in the mail. That's all. Very simple. And they are paying attention because we're hearing from people. They're getting yeah, letters they're getting back. getting letters back from Danny Fassell, uh, and I'm sure from some of the Child, others. someone told me this Oh, morning. good. Excellent. Got a two-page letter from Beautiful. Long Child. So the more the merrier, and that's why, you know, we're going to get these cards to people in all 50 states to write to their congressmen. But the only way we can send you the cards is if you send us your name and address. So far, P.O. Box 2214, Miami, 33055. Another sad but not unexpected piece of news. What a depressing Wednesday, huh? Yeah, so Boy. far. <clears throat> Boy. Very sad piece of news, but as I said, not unexpected from a moronic redneck is that I hear through the grapevine that uh, Shirley Peters had a couple of guests on last night. You know, that station just has this real problem. We've done a lot of shows here with uh, pre people with AIDS. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I think we were the first ones, but, you know, who cares? We're not in, in some kind of a contest to see who gets in a Guinness Book of Records, and we don't do those shows for publicity. We do them to try to educate the public and to make people a little more understanding and intelligent about this. But uh, W. Snooze, every time they do one of those shows, there are people over there, certain individuals, three of them basically, Fowler, Thompson, and now Wichner, who just have a nervous breakdown, and they don't want to come in the studio, and they're afraid they're going to be polluted, and they don't want to breathe the air. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shirley had a couple of persons with AIDS on her show last night, and Wichner refused to come into the building, and they had to call the uh, Johnny Dolan of uh, AM, Don Webb, in to do a uh, Wichner show because Wichner refused. Now, how long can you go on being a stupid, uh, idiotic redneck, Jerry? That's the question. Yeah, I mean, it's pathetic. It's embarrassing. I mean, there is absolutely no question that AIDS is not a disease that's an airborne virus. It's not communicable by breathing the same air or talking into the same microphone or shaking somebody's hand, which I'm sure he wouldn't have done. But, I mean, you know, mm. it's just it's unbelievable to think that they have such Neanderthals over there like uh, Thompson and Wichner who continue spreading all of this hate, all of this hysteria. And, of course, Fowler just loves it because basically that's where he's coming from anyway is an extreme, ugly right-wing position. That's what he's all about. Now, think about it, Jerry. How do you catch AIDS? Yeah. Hasn't it been made very clear in the media? Well, when you're as ignorant as he is, you know, don't, don't expect him to learn something at his advanced state. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, the man is truly a monument to ignorance. He butchers the language. He's one of the most bigoted people I've ever known, ever come in contact with in my life. And, uh, you know, that gun of his is just an... Ex there's nothing else there. Really, no, you're laughing, but I'm serious because I worked with a guy for six years. There's nothing else there. If you take away that 357 Magnum, 
there's not even a human being there. There's nothing behind it. Because that's his whole ego. That's his whole macho thing is that gun. And, uh, you know, really, I, I hope it never is too late to learn, but I think in his case it may be. But, gee, just to continue displaying this, this paranoia and this frightening ignorance, uh, mm. sad. I don't think Jerry would have done what it takes to catch AIDS from an AIDS victim with these people. I just don't believe it. I'm not touching that line. <laughs> okay. Okay, now let's do a break, and when we come back, I think we got three breaks this hour. Boy, this is getting oh, really no. frightening now. Imagine what's happened when we get to a 12 share. <laughs> Oh, boy. We're in a lot of trouble, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's 1018 at WINZ, and I'm sorry that, you know, we sound a little bit down, a little maudlin here at the beginning of the show, but we'll uh, try to pick it up, right? Try. You'll start cackling in a little bit, we'll... and the audience will start complaining. Yeah. By the way, speaking of cackling, just before we take the break, and I'm going to get into this when we come back, because I don't like to pick on other stations in the market. You know that. <laughs> oh. And uh, But, I, you know, this morning I tuned in a certain station that you used to work at, as a matter of fact. I don't want to mention which one it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only can't you hear the host of the show, who sounds like he's on... You know, it's great that they gave him his own ashtray, but are they going to give him a mic? You know, that would be <laughs> nice. You can't hear him. The music is the right levels, and the uh, old uh, agony there is the right levels. Uh, you can't hear the host. I mean, Greg, where are you? You know, he's like he's like uh, in another room somewhere. Like he's doing the show in Japan, and they're in Miami Lakes or something. Maybe but he is. But talk about uh, phony laughter. I mean, if anybody criticizes Glenn Hill, I'm going to stick up for him today because I usually rip him, and he deserves it. But uh, I'm going to tell you, anybody who criticizes him for the contrived phony laughter that he's guilty of, I mean, shame on you. That goes on in all these FM stations all the time. That's all they do. They sit. I mean, is it funny to say, Love 94 is your, you know... Doing the talk up to the record. Well, at least he doesn't do the whole talk up like Ricky Ticky right. Hummel. But you know, as you're doing the talk up and you, you know, you drop in Love '94 and <laughs> I mean, is that funny? Well, I guess if you see the book, huh? <laughs> okay, 20 minutes after 10 at W I N Z, we'll come right back. 23 after 10 at WINZ. Neil Rogers here till two, and Stan Major will be along to um, do his thing. What is his thing, anyway? Yeah, don't ask me. Okay. Uh, anyway, getting back to things, I was listening to Gloves 94 this morning, and I don't like to uh, pick on the other stations in town because most of them uh, don't even deserve mention. But uh, they do. They really do. First of all, talk about not knowing what the format is, okay? Um, <laughs> what is the format over there? Are they pl Is that an oldie station now? I heard Someday We'll Be Together by the Supremes, I guess... Uh, Greg was dedicating that to Don Agony. <laughs> and they're already together again, so I don't know what he need to play that for. <laughs> or maybe he was dedicating it... Now, let's see, you never worked with him, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, did you? Okay, then it must have been for you. Yeah, first time he worked... I mean, worked. why don't you come right out, Greg, and say who you're dedicating it to for Tweety Bird? You know, just a little code there. We'd know who it was. <laughs> I mean, they spent... Uh, the whole time I was listening, there was innuendo, or in fact, my name was mentioned within the first two minutes I tuned in the show. Yeah. Because they were doing uh, Who's the Dumbest Person in South Florida? Dumbest Man. Dumbest Man. Mm -hmm. And some old fart, evidently, had called in and mentioned my name. And I didn't hear that call, but I heard a reference to it from a young lady who was taking issue with that and said that the caller was the dumbest man because I'm, um, you know, all this wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. And Budell then said that he was an old... And then we didn't hear the end of the <laughs> word, which I thought was very courageous. I thought that was good. I, it, you said they don't have a delay, but it sounded... I heard like what sounded like dumping three... Well, dumping's not a good word. Um, bleeping. Yeah, they bleeped it. Like three different times in the 15, 20 minutes that I listened. They must Coming to work this morning. Yeah. They don't have a delay. Well, then what is that all about? I mean, if you're going to say, say the word. Don't pretend you're going to say the word. Say it. It's not one of the seven dirty of words. Of course not. I mean, gee, if you can't call a guy an old fart, Greg, then what, uh, what kind of a... Sh and, of course, it made no difference because nobody could hear him anyway. He's off <laughs> mic. He's in another studio. I'm serious. Couldn't you tell or are you deaf? Well, that's, I am deaf, Gee, of course. I got this great r stereo in my car that's, you know, my prized possession. And uh, I've got it turned up plenty loud. The music is all the right levels and everybody else. And then all of a sudden... Hey, I'm 194. I don't Don. I mean, what is that all about? What kind of a show is that? And uh, Neil this and Neil that. And, oh, yeah, we drive in Hallandale all the time. And there's yeah. Madonna. Let's, uh, does, we have, does she have her weed eater to shave with today? I mean, come on, guys. Let's cut it out, will you please? Get your own material. Get your own uh, body hair, will you? In fact, I noticed Budell had to shave his uh, facial hair off, didn't he? Yeah. What was that for? Was that for Channel 10? Probably. 
I don't know. How come Dwight him. Lauderdale can have facial hair and he can't? I didn't ask. What is it. that? We have a racism, reverse racism at Channel 10. Black people can have, now, although, in, you know, Cabral Marshall, if he had body hair over his whole head, that would be good. That would be excellent. He is, he is so bad. You know, not only does he look like he just came in with E.T. from another planet, but he, knows, he doesn't do sports. He knows nothing about sports. If you listen to the substance, if you can watch it long enough to hear what he's saying. He has no clue. I mean, he doesn't know uh, soccer from uh, curling, you know? He's in the twilight zone. How did we get to him? It's a world of difference. <laughs> yeah, channel 10. a world of difference. Lauderdale can put a silly... Well, see, Dwight needs that mustache to look like a silly... Like the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> he needs to look silly with a mustache. Whereas, I guess, Budell, if he would have still had the mustache on, it would... Uh, I don't know what it means. I guess white guys just can't have mustaches like Alan Mendelson. Now, there's a guy who needs to be covered from head to toe <laughs> with a big fur coat or something, anything. Just get him off of there with those stupid props. See, now, yesterday I mentioned all the people that I like on TV. So today mm -hmm. we're giving equal time, and we're uh, trashing a few of the ridiculous people on local TV. Great. Right? Yeah, terrific. So your idea... Like Mark Ludner at Channel 7. Oh, God. I wonder if he puts his hair in curlers. You think so? That's the <laughs> only way any... Nobody has hair that curly. Seriously. He must put his hair in curlers at night. Oh, wouldn't that be great? Let's get him in here early in the morning and do an interview with Mark Ludner with his curlers <laughs> on. Well, I bet he looks just like Joan Crawford in the morning. But I bet he doesn't clean as well. You know, you're you right. You think he uses wire hangers? Yeah. He oh, might. yeah. Come on, Mark. No more <laughs> wire hangers. We caught you. Yeah, I've never seen a woman with hair that curly. No. Well, now that you mention it, although he has a mustache, <laughs> which is good because it covers a big part of his face. <laughs> See, now, a lot of us, we're in radio because we know. In fact, almost everybody you know on radio is ugly. And there's a reason for it. We're not going to go on TV and assault the audience with our ugliness. But well, some of these people just don't have enough good sense. They won't keep their ugly puss off the TV screen. Now, speaking of that... Like Howard Stern, for example. Howard's funny on radio, but if he really gets that show on TV, it's going to bomb. Because his nose, I'm going to tell you, as bad as David Brenner's nose was, Howard looks like David Brenner and Rick Azar put together. Put together. Yeah. He looks like uh, Roxanne. You know Steve Martin, that new movie with the Pinocchio nose? <laughs> That's Howard. Howard wishes it would have grown someplace else, but unfortunately, uh, nature doesn't work out that way. In this week's TV Guide... It works in mysterious ways. Yes. You look in this week's TV Guide. Please. There's a full-page ad for the new dating game, On Channel the Alice 39. Rantel show. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Alice was very, uh, legitimately... You know, the interesting part of it is Alice is under a lot of pressure and a lot of attack yeah. from all sides. Not from us, because uh, we like what he's doing these days. But hmm. um, that show yesterday on Circumcision must have been really sensational, huh? I heard part of it. Were there some cutting comments? <laughs> that must have been hot. But anyway, he was, you know, he was apoplectic last week about Mike Thompson and Thompson's r obnoxious, uh, fascistic, you know, let's uh, tattoo everybody and you're just short of concentration camps. You know, that's where he's coming from. Now he's got Wichner who's doing his redneck, I'm not going to come in and breathe the air thing. You know, how, how must it feel to be over there in the midst of that melange of Hmong, you know, over there at W. Snooze? Terrible. Unbelievable. Bunch of bigoted right wing uh, redneck fascist pigs. And that's the best we can say about some of those people. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Back to looks. You don't start cackling pretty soon, I'm <laughs> telling you. I'm I don't I don't know how we're gonna get this show. I mean the whole building this morning yeah. is depressed, which you can understand. Shell shock. And um then of course all of this other stuff that I'm talking about here is not very uplifting to top it all off. Mm -mm. And the thing about the pit bulls and the stuff they're showing on the news is enough to make you regurgitate. And I know we're going to get some of these people. And if you call me today to tell me about what wonderful animals they are, you see, these animals were inbred long ago, centuries ago, okay? And they were made to be mean and to fight, to do this whole business. And there's a genetic thing there now. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to eliminate it by patting them on the head and saying, oh, nice puppy, nice puppy. Because when you least expect it, some of them even turn on the owners yeah. when they least expect yeah. it. They don't discriminate. And it's, well, no, they're not discriminating. And, of course, they also don't give you any advance warning. It's when they all of a sudden, right. you know, have a uh, bug in their ear or something. I bingo, know. they go nuts and they attack and they grab on and they won't let go and they just uh, rip you to shreds. Now, if that's, you know, and I just, to me, seeing the pictures of that woman in California with her dog, that was the same as Wichner and his gun. It's the same kind of redneck mentality. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can understand if people have a dog to protect them. That's one thing. But a dog that's like a killer beast, you know, that's uh, to intimidate people, uh, that, that's a different story. Mm. Sick. Scary. Pathetic.
subhuman. And always get these calls every time you do a show on this. And there are these people, oh, yes, my wonderful pet uh, powwow. He's right. uh, just never, never never stole a freight train. And, uh, <laughs> you know, in fact, I wouldn't put it past the pit bull. You know, to, uh, you can just see now, locking onto the end of a freight train and dragging it down the tracks yeah. about 80 miles an hour. I could see it. Look at all the fuel we could save, right? You always get those calls. We've never had a problem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, always get those As calls. I said before, pit bulls and their owners ought to be, uh, you know, put away. <laughs> ought to go to doggy uh, heaven or hell or whatever it is. I'm serious, because it's a sickness. There are all these... You can go down to the animal shelter, to the pound, and you'll find thousands of dogs. And for those of you who have a weakness for cats, which I don't want to get into, you'll find <laughs> loads of animals, beautiful little animals that need a home, that are already potty trained. They're, all, they're like, they're ready to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Ready. All you got to do is give them a couple of bucks, whatever it is, and take it home, and you're all set. You got a nice pet, all kinds of breeds, mongrels, Irish setters, German shepherds, you name it. We don't need pit bulls, right? I mean, how many breeds of dogs do we need before we're satisfied? So I think the solution is to have all the pit bulls that turn on their owners. <laughs> and then we'll shoot the pit bull when they finish the job. And then, hey, bingo, it's all <laughs> over with, right? We've got the problem solved both ways. I have no idea what that has to do with Gloves 94. And no. We're not, we're not going to mention what's-his-name anymore because he's getting too excited about it. Oh, no, he, he, he asked you to continue to yeah. mention it. He loves it. He was tinkling this morning. Was he really? So to upset him, we well, won't mention it. Well, it's about time. His... I heard he hasn't tinkled in months. Yeah, we won't mention his name just to upset him. At Gloves 94. So, but I do have one thing to tell you. Speaking of looks, just to finish that thought. That we, you're Don't finish about it. Ago. Expand on it. Well. Because we may talk for four hours today. Yeah, we might. Who needs these pain-in-the-ass callers? If you look in TV... Oh, could you please play this? And could you please... Play Get lost with that stuff. Or we'll play it when we're ready to play it. <laughs> Not request. Could demand. you please say hello? Could you please say goodbye? Oh. Oh, here comes our first message of the oh, morning. Oh, we've Amiga. been waiting for this. They never... Say, please. Yeah, never. No, they demand, as a matter of yeah. fact. We want to hear it right now. Or we're going to write to the FCC. <laughs> and to management. Well, you can't write to management here because they're out to lunch. <laughs> I don't mean just like now at 10.30. <laughs> they're just uh, kind of like a long lunch, you know? It starts uh, in January. <laughs> 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 and it ends around New Year's Eve. That's all radio management. That's not just, although it's a matter of degree. I mean, it could be worse. We could be at IOD. Oh, did you ever get to find out what Bill McQuig wanted yesterday? I called him back. Uh, he, he wasn't, wasn't there. there. They boy, said. there's something going on over there that we haven't found out about. But yet. I left a message. Oh boy, he never yeah. got back to you. No. Hmm. Maybe he's back in Texas, <laughs> and you told him. What could he want to say to me? If you want to, yeah. It's amazing the calls that you get from all these other people in the business. I know. If there's anybody out there who's got some rumors, uh, just call and leave a message for Tweety Bird. <laughs> Don't call Glenn Hill. Just call Tweety Bird. The switchboard will know who you're talking about. <laughs> TV Guide. Full page ad for the new dating game on Channel 39. Oh, yeah. This is what you started a little while ago. Well, wait a minute. We have to take another break. Uh... This is good. Oh, yeah. Remember the day we did that? <laughs> we milked uh, almost three hours. And then when we got to it, it was worthless. That was the yeah, incredible see, you're part. You're going to build this up it's so some much. really big thing going on, and we took like three hours to get to it, and by the time I let them bleep it out, blurt it out, you're gonna, uh, it was You're going to do the same thing to this. Well, uh, no, I think this could be really big. could be good. <laughs> it's not going to be as good as this picture in the Herald this morning. <laughs> now, again, it's just a picture, okay? It's just some young guy floating in the Clevelander Hotel pool on Miami Beach. It's probably His a name tourist. is Son, P Sean Padgett. He's yeah. probably just a tourist. Yeah. And uh, I turned the picture upside down. I took a look, and I said, well, hey, <laughs> the Herald can't be all bad. <laughs> He's finally given in a little bit. Of course, just above it on the top part of the page, look at, there's Joe Robbie. Now, does, isn't that a guy you like to be friends with? Look at the look on his face. I want to hang out oh, with him. Oh, boy. Yeah. Kind of guy you want to go to dinner They ought to with. put him on the defensive line, man. He'd scare everybody away. They'd be <laughs> running back to their, old go their own goal line if they saw Joe. Look at that picture. <laughs> Ooh, I think that must have been when he was sitting near Rick Weaver when he had that expression <laughs> on his face. Huh? <laughs> I mean, talk about a sour look. Oh, boy. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Well, finally got wrinkling, me laughing. Wrinkling one nostril there, too, Joe. Well, I don't blame you from what I've heard. <laughs> 25 before 11 at WYNZ on a Wednesday morning. Let's uh, do another break, and then when we continue, we'll see if we can't get around to that big story. Start Thursday morning off on the right foot. 
This is Tom Gallagher. Join Laurie Shepard, Frank Motek, and me for all the latest news tomorrow morning. Ron Harrison on sports, Alibera with traffic, and Paul Kangas on business. 22 before 11 in WINZ. Don't call with a request here because, uh, you know, we're getting a little bit surly about that stuff, all right? Don't... Oh, I got my recorder already here. Would you please do this? <laughs> no, right. enough of that already. We're not in the mood today. No, we're just not in the mood for that. Now, at noon, I was thinking, you know, one day, because I'm going on vacation after Friday, and uh, here comes another message. All through Major's show, they were calling in with these requests. Of course, and Stan's not going to play most of that stuff because he's not going to rip off my material. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like? La- now I did hear him play that um, erection song yesterday. Mm-hmm. Me I too. was in shock. Isn't he the one who was going on carrying on about how filthy it was and how disgusting that I was playing it? And lo and behold, it kind of popped up on Stan's show. <laughs> that was right after that young girl called, that thirteen-year-old girl that just kind of popped up on Stan's show. Mm-hmm. So, do you want me to tell this story now? <laughs> Is this a good time? <laughs> I'd like to get it in before 11. No, no. Are you serious? Maybe 11 o'clock tonight. <laughs> it's real brief. I wonder if Bruce Williams had a good show last night, because last night was Tuesday. <laughs> and uh, he really, uh, what's doing is always uh, best on Tuesday. Boy, I tell you. He yeah, he's doing great. They got great numbers there on TalkNet. Yeah. I'll tell you, is that, is that a tribute to how desperate the uh, talk <laughs> audience is in this town? They're desperate. They really are. Oh, that's right. I heard. As a matter of fact, I heard that at the eight fifteen. I heard pattern change. I was now. See, I must confess, mm-hmm. I was listening to Bruce Williams. See, and um, I heard us. Uh, you know, I heard the little crackle that you hear when we change pattern, and then the crackle kept going on, and that was kind of interesting. And I realized that we were off the air. How yeah. long were we off the air yeah, for? A long yes. time. Two yeah. hours. Yeah, I heard it. Oh, too. that must have been a pubic service, huh? Oh well, well, with the F. Well, I'm hey, not... listen. The people listen to Talknet. They wouldn't know the difference. But the FM was off, too, you know. Oh, no. Yeah. So what's the difference? You said it. He said it. No, we don't want to start up with them again today, okay? Because we understand through the grapevine, okay? We understand through the grapevine that Peter Bolger called in one of our AM people. Oh, FM was only off for an hour. Well, that's okay. We can give him the extra hour handicap, you know. (laughs) In fact, if we were doing six furlongs, we could start at the seven furlong marker, and we could let them start at the top of the stretch, and we'd still beat them, you know, no problem. <laughs> Even if we were carrying 140 pounds, and they had, like, um, <laughs> Diane Wojtas, or whoever she is. But anyway, um, I don't want to mention Ron's name on the air, because he got himself in a lot of trouble yesterday with that excellent call, by the way, that was right on target when he called in here. Mm-hmm. And he is going to be filling in, what, the first day of my vacation? Monday. Ron Harrison? Yeah. Oh, that's going to be good, because Ron's going to be, by Monday, he ought to be really ready for that. He's going to just uh, tear ass in here on Monday, isn't He's he? He's ready now. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He, In fact, uh, gee, I really missed the mark, didn't I? If I would have put him on today, I could have gone to Calder today. Because <laughs> he was ready this morning, man. He is ready to kill. To foaming. attack. Foaming at He's the like mouth. a pit bull in heat. He is, as a matter of fact. And I don't blame him. And he was called in to the program director's office in the FM. Mm. You know, Peter, who used to be our friend, <laughs> up until a quarter to ten, quarter to eleven yesterday when he came in. What are you guys talking about? You talking about me? What are you talking about? What are you saying? Very sensitive. Oh, they're getting real nervous. Well, they saw that those numbers, you know, mm-hmm. and I was told yesterday that I'm overreacting because it's going to take at least a year for that format to get off the ground. Mm. And, of course, isn't that what they said to the people who preceded the Wright brothers? Uh, and what happened with them, you know, until the Wright brothers came along, none of that other stuff ever got off, well, maybe a couple inches off the ground, then it all collapsed and smashed. You've seen those films, haven't you? Sure. Those first attempts to fly? Sure. Well, they all thought it was going to take about <laughs> three minutes to get off the ground. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! But we're not going to rag them because they're doing their best. And working. that's the part that's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They're doing their best. My story... To do their duty. Well, so wait a minute. It fits Don't in interrupt with me the with your story. It yeah, fits in with the FM. Oh, does it really? Yeah. Well, good. When we get around to it, it'll uh, piece right together <laughs> with what we're talking about. Yeah. See, this is one of those days where we need to do one of these convoluted, uh, as Bob Lasseter would say, monologues. <laughs> is that what this is? A monologue. Yeah. A four-hour monologue. And then, of course, there's no time left to take calls. <laughs> Kyle likes that. Look at him. He's, <laughs> he is foaming at the mouth. He's so enthused. We might not take any calls today. Come on, should we give it a shot? 
Look at that. There's one vote yes. I vote yes. Come on, let's make it unanimous. Let's see. Come on. There's three hands, and there are only two of us. Here's four hands. <laughs> There's only three of us. Well, And you haven't even raised a hand yet, Mr. Coward. Especially, no courage. Especially but anyway, as I started to say before, before I was so rudely interrupted. <laughs> see, now that I said no calls, look at that. Look at that. A what a bunch of mung brains. Frantically. Huh? Frantically. Frantic flash again on the phone. They want to talk to you. Well... I don't know. Hey, don't they understand we need to rest from them once in a while? I mean, who wants to hear these people? Well, I'm going to listen to you for one more week. I know I can only handle another week. And then he calls back. That's the incredible part. Well, I guess he figured if he was going to be calling us, he better get it out of the way before he stopped listening. <laughs> that guy. I thought about him yesterday, man. That was incredible. Wouldn't it be something if he turned out to be the guy in the pool here? No, he no, didn't. I no, don't think so. No, no, no. way. This kid's got a lot more smarts than that. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, by the way, if Sean, uh, what's his name here? Yeah, see that we're Magic. Gonna... If he calls in, we'll take his call. So you're going to have to sc at least screen the call. No, he'll know. Okay. He'll know by the flash on the phone. <laughs> Believe me, when the light lights up <laughs> in Technicolor, then he'll know. Like unruly children, the South Florida callers love to pester us. Oh, that's true. It's like little kids. I've always said that. You know, like little kids who taunt you, and they just pester and pester. Then they run away because they know they're going to get beaten. Then when you're least expecting it, they start sneaking up, and they start pestering again. Then they run away, and it never stops. It never stops. Like ringing the doorbell and running away. Okay, now let's see from everybody in the audience who'd like us just to dump the calls today and do four hours and just, uh, you know, play it by ear. Let's see it on the phone. I bet you there are a lot of people who'd like to see us just skip all the calls today and just sit here and have a good time. And schmooze a little bit. Uh, look at that. Of course, four of them are ringing already, but that's okay. Hey, listen. Timing is everything in life. All seven of them are lit. I think you're serious about not taking calls. Serious as a doorknob, okay? <laughs> well, we'll see. I have never been more serious in my life. You're really thinking about it. Wait a minute. There were a lot of positive calls about the phone out. Oh, yeah, that's right. That was last April. <laughs> that's true. In fact, when we had our guests in here, we just talked for four hours. We took no calls, and they were some of the best shows we ever had with those guests. Let's see. Who can we go out in the building and drag in here to talk to? I don't think today is the day to go out no, and drag people in the building. Right. Boy, of all the Ooh. days, leave it to you to come up with an idea like that. <laughs> oh, boy. Mr. Tact, you know? Everybody is weeping, and, uh, uh, you know, and it's a really depressing place today. And if you missed the beginning of the show, one of our staff members uh, died in a tragic uh, automobile accident last night. Very, at a very, what was he, in his early 20s, I would think? About yeah. 20 ish? Yeah. And, Young uh, 20s. Very nice kid, and everybody's upset and broken up here. And, uh, you know, to try to <sighs> develop some kind of, you know, for me to come on the air playing some kind of wild, raucous thing this morning would have been inappropriate because oh, I just don't boy. feel that way. It sure would have been. Yeah. So we're well, what does that mean? In other words, you would have uh, jumped all over me if I would have done that. You'd have come in here and say, tacky. Yeah, that's what he would have done. In other <laughs> words, if I would have tried to lighten things up a little bit and get people laughing, you'd have come in here. So there's no way to win, see? Well, I've chuckled. No, and it. now you're saying, well, you know, he's really being depressing, getting the audience into a maudlin state. No, 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 no. You said that during we the break. No, well, you chuckled a few times here. No, I didn't chuckle at all. You cackled a couple <laughs> of mini cackles, which is the best we've gotten out of them so far today, which brings me back. Isn't it amazing? I've always said that, you know, what goes around comes around or something like that, <laughs> and that these things piece together. And we went through that whole convoluted thing to bring me back to what I was going to talk about in terms of that station that I listened to this morning for a half hour coming to work. And they were cackling at stuff that wasn't even... I mean, the call letters are not funny, okay? <laughs> if they would have said Gloves 94 and cackled, that would have been funny. Maybe they'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Come on, Greg. Why don't you say Gloves 94 tomorrow? That would be funny. That would be In fact, idea. I think it would be hysterical if they could... I know those jingles they got cost a lot of money. But I think it would be funny if they invested a few bucks and got one that said Gloves 94. Man, that would be, that'd be hysterical. Look at all the attention. We'd promote it. Yeah, sure. And then Peter would come in here, and we'd have another closed-door <laughs> meeting. And we don't want any friction between the two stations. We all want to get along, and the people are not in a good mood up there. They're a little sensitive. Mm -hmm. They saw the numbers. A little sensitive. Well, they're super sensitive. Yeah. They're foaming at the mouth. They're looking at R&R. &R. They're checking the job listings. No, listen, it takes a long... I was told yesterday it takes a long time 
long, a long time long. for that format to get off the ground. It's going to take them a good year at least. <laughs> I'm telling you verbatim. That's okay. what I was told yesterday. All right. I was not told to stop ragging EFN. That's one thing I'll say because they know if they say that to me that I'll only do it that much more, see. They finally have learned to understand me here a little bit, and that is that uh, they have to use reverse psychology. In fact, if they encourage me to come on the air and rip RFN, then they know I'll probably cut down a little bit. Yeah. They did not, however, encourage me, so I'm not cutting down. <laughs> they do know that about you, by the way, <laughs> that whatever they tell you... I do the opposite, and look how it's working, man. It's working <laughs> like look a charm. The, look at the ratings. Do we have to talk about Hallandale? Can't we... Uh, why do we have to mention Hallandale, Neil, you know? And boy, as soon as I heard that, I knew I was on the right track, man. I just attacked it full force, and look what we did. We got like a 99 share with yeah. with the stars and the Sonny Rosenberg's mezuzah. We got it all in February. Maybe Sonny could call us today. No, we wouldn't talk to that douchebag oh, okay. on a bet. All right. Get rid of him. Whatever happened to Sonny? That's what I mean. Now that he's the mayor, I guess, he doesn't have time for us. Right. It's probably blasting out of his office this he's morning. He's too... Uh, He's too busy doing impotent things. <laughs> it's 11 before... <laughs> and uh, he's one of the most impotent officials in all of South Florida, I'll guarantee you that. 11 before 11 at WINZ, and we'll come back after this. Okay, we have a new bumper sticker for owners of pit bulls to display on your automobile. Bite the hand that feeds you, and hopefully your pet will read it. Now, maul the hand that feeds you would be... That would be disgusting. Although it sounds pretty good to me. In the Sun Sentinel, my favorite newspaper that comes at uh, 6.30 in the morning with a yellow wrapper on it, um, you notice I qualified that because it's not really a very good paper, but it's sure better than uh, buying that Herald. Although if the Herald keeps printing pictures <laughs> like this... Uh, now, you know, the more I look at that, that could be a very young man in that picture because you really can't tell. They've touched a nerve with you today. Well, I won't say which one. <laughs> no, he's not that young. He's about... Uh, he's of legal age. So I can't get my story out before you talk about this in the Tourism Sentinel. panel declares spring break <laughs> dead. Is this incredible? Boy, what a surprise. By Scott A. Zamost. And this is a most disgusting story. <laughs> really, this is amazing. Th this is so typical. This is like saying, uh, you know, Hitler is dead. No, in fact, I take that back. <laughs> and there's still those who don't believe that. Who can we, uh, who can we use? This is like saying Abe Lincoln is dead, okay? Is, I mean, is that uh, controversial? Is there any debate about that? I don't think so. It's like saying that uh, Nero is dead. <laughs> Julius Caesar. Abraham. Unless, of course, it's Abraham Solomon. He's dead, too. You know, he was my grandfather. <laughs> May he rest avala sholem, as they say in uh, certain parts of the beach. Hmm. Tourism. See, you don't understand any of that. That's good. We need a good Goyesha cup like him in here, because he doesn't understand any of those expressions. I know. I'm a Goy boy. <laughs> as, opposed to which, as opposed to what Wichner calls Jewish people, Jew boys. Yeah. Like, I'll never forget the time he said on the air to a caller who was referring to me. He said, oh, he's a good Jew boy. <laughs> Jew boy? I mean, this man has... has prejudicial tendencies that haven't even been discovered in the human race yet. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, but I said in the human race, which of course yeah. qualifies it as far as he's concerned. But that's, a, that's an accurate statement about me. Aren't I a goy boy? That's a disgusting... Maybe it a is? boy George, I think, would be more accurate. <laughs> is it really disgusting? <laughs> no. Irene used to call me that. <laughs> oh, don't tell me she's Jewish. Yeah. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> all of my Jewish friends... <laughs> On this day, <laughs> do we all want to reconsider? I mean, she's enough to make you want to give it up. You know? <laughs> if you told that to Sammy Davis, man, bingo. Tell, Rich, tell Richard Taylor Richard that. Taylor, he'll, be, yeah. he'll take that mezuzah off in no time. The Rasta Jew. Oh, boy. He'll be Rasta Goy in no time. <laughs> he'll be back to uh, eating those grits or whatever it is. Tourism panel declares spring break dead. Say goodbye to where the boys are, says Scott Zamost hmm. in Zamost Ridiculous <laughs> article. That's the opinion of Broward County tourism officials who decided on Tuesday... Now listen to this. It took them only one year to kill something that's been going on for 30 years. Right. In one year they killed it. Mm -hmm. Daytona has it now. And as I predicted, mm -hmm. as I predicted on this show, they're going to be wringing their hands saying, 
Oh, what are we going to do now? That's what always goes on in this town. It's like with casino gambling. The Herald scared the pants off of everybody. We don't need it. It's uh, horrible. The mob. Okay, everybody voted against it. Now what do we do? Well, don't ask us. We don't know. You know, that's the response. Same in Fort Lauderdale. All those fascist, right-wing, hateful, nasty, redneck-type people who don't like kids, who don't want fun, who, you know, who want it to be another geriatric paradise. They chased away all the kids. Of course, we include in that group of fascists the police up there in Broward, the sheriffs and the Fort Lauderdale police, who are probably among the worst in the country mm. in law enforcement, the most right-wing, militant, fascistic, boot-stomping, goose-stepping. Other than that, they're not bad. Um, <laughs> Now listen, Broward County tourism officials decided on Tuesday not to advertise spring break after concluding they definitely want the Fort Lauderdale institution to end. We've lost spring break, said James Payton, a member of Tourist Development Council's Marketing Advertising Committee. If we try to advertise it, we are committing suicide. There is too much of a negative image in the college community for spring break to to come back, Nikki Grossman said. Oh, yeah, she's a genius. <laughs> so to simply market spring break on college campuses again would be a waste of money. Bob Matwani, owner of the Merrimack Beach Resort Hotel, warned that many small businesses cannot survive without the collegiate business. Now, here comes the good part. When General Motors or Ford have to discontinue a particular model, they spend years to come out with a substitute, he said. Here, they have no plans to generate any kind of business to replace what we've lost. That's right. Very well said. That's right. Same thing that I said months ago. In fact, yeah. I said it last year when they were in the process of arresting everybody and chasing the kids away. Now, we don't want them here because they got too much money to spend and they're too young. If they were old and they only wanted the early bird dinner and they were nasty and miserable and drove 10 miles an hour, then we'd like them. Welcome them with open arms. Yeah, exactly. With open packages of sweet and low, we'd welcome them. <laughs> what a disgusting... You know, this area is such a contradiction, man. You walk out, and even in the middle of December, the sun is shining. It's 75, 80 degrees. The climate is beautiful. The natural beauty, the sand and the ocean and everything, it's just phenomenal. The people that run this state, man, are maniacs from this governor, this fascist governor we've got up there, this lying pig of a governor. All the way down the line. I mean, what's the hope? It's like they've taken paradise and turned it into hell. Which is why we call Florida, of course, a tropical depression. <laughs> Boy, it's really, it's frustrating. I guess if you can be oblivious and just go ahead and uh, fake your way through life and none of these things are important to you, then you can survive. But if you're one of these businessmen... Mm. And you have to count on making your living from living and breathing people coming in and spending their money. You're screwed. You're screwed. And, of course, our good governor, look at all the business we're losing in this state now. Oh. And we don't want to leave him alone because the Democratic leadership in the legislature went right along. And, oh, yeah, they were right there. Good old Ron Silver and all those great Americans. All those douchebags. And didn't the Jack Gordon sit right on this show with Tom McPherson? And didn't they say, oh, don't worry, there's no support for this, don't worry about it, don't right. make a big deal about it? They sat right on this show, so we just forgot about it. And now we're all screwed. Except for Mike Wolf, who's in the other room looking at pictures of Michelle, getting ready to bring you the <laughs> local area news headlines, world news from CBS at 11. And we'll come back and continue this four-hour monologue at 11.06. Stan Major this afternoon with a... Oh, just one of the most incredibly naked shows in the history of mankind from 2 to 6. Rushing through rush hour? Then count on us to rush up everything you need to know. 94 News wins. W-I-N-Z. Miami, Fort Lauderdale. 94 News wins. It does. It's painful to be rejected by your fellow queens. <laughs> okay, it's 22 before noon. <laughs> Time for another break? It probably is. Well, I'm looking at this log, and just as big as life, <laughs> as sure as death and taxes under Bob Martinez. Can I tell the story after the break? Well, uh, sometime after the break. I'm not going to make any promises. We've got a busy schedule here today. As Lee would say, we have a full agenda, a full menu today of poll questions. Well, maybe we could take a poll today. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yes or no? <laughs> no question, just yes or no. That's right. And we'll send the results over to Lee. Yeah, and then he can use it tomorrow. <laughs> what do you think, Lee? Yes or no? 
Who needs questions? You know, if you can get a lot of calls. I think so. Good. Thank you. I don't think so. Thank you very much. <laughs> hey, at least that would be different, you know, than... Uh, what do you think about Donna Rice? Did she really do it with Gary? And how big was it? You know, I, I mean, who cares? Who cares? Oh, I know what we could do. We I mean, do. that's really some poll when the biggest boob is the one asking the question, you know. We could ask the question, do you like polls or do you not like polls? That's good. That's, that's a good very question. good. Yeah, that'll kill a couple of hours. <laughs> we have a full menu, a full agenda. Then we ought to do a couple of hours of begging for clemency for any uh, criminal who commits some heinous crime, like, you know, cutting off some girl's arms. You know, we ought to do some sympathy for that. Then we can do the uh, Kurt Waldheim love-in for a couple of hours, <laughs> tell everybody he never, you know, never met a Nazi he didn't like. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> That's your buddy, Lee Fowler. Lee. One thing about Lee, though, he's consistent. <laughs> I mean, whether it was on GBS, whether it's on Snooze, no matter what station he's on, he, you know, does about a 1-5. And there's something to be said for that. Consistent. Whether it's on a station with no number or a station with a big number, he <laughs> always stays right in there, hangs right in with about a 1-5, one 1-9. One Maybe once in a while a statistical glitch, he'll get up to a 2, a little bit over, not too often. 1-9, <laughs> one 1-5. Nine, one Man, Lee, I'll tell you, you're as solid as the rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> okay, 17 before noon at WI and Xenia Rogers. We have a Tweety Bird locked in a studio in his cage, and Mr. Motek has just brought in... The, oh, look at that. The USA Today. Here's a big front page exclusive, Baker to Han. Now you're getting closer yeah, to I the met truth. Get... When you mentioned Mitch Gaylord, now you're finally getting into I the... met Mitch. When American Anthem... Oh, can I came touch out. you? Yes, yeah, sure. You I... met Mitch Gaylord? I had lunch with him. Oh, my God. Now, if they could have Scott Madsen and Mitch Gaylord together doing the body by Soul of Flex <laughs> or doing something, I bet you they could get an 80 share. They'd get a 100 share in my house. Uh, I mean to tell you. Yeah, he was in that, what was the name of the movie? American Anthem. American Anthem, and I yeah. still haven't seen it. Is that coming to cable yet? I think it's on cable. I think it's, it's right on, currently In fact, on I saw cable. a promo for that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. You, you'll want to see that. I uh, will want to see that, because sure. I saw the promo, and my tongue was on the floor. I yeah. had to scrape it off the yeah. floor. It was incredible. Now, my next my question tongue. Uh, <laughs> fits in with the direction this show is going now. What is that? Uh, Lewd and lascivious? Yeah. Now, look, I've always said there's no law against looking. Haven't I always said that? There's nothing wrong with looking. I and you're agree. certainly a classic. You've got all those Absolutely. dirty pictures of Phoebe Kate. Yeah. It's okay Disgusting to look. Disgusting pictures of Phoebe Kate. Look, all we want to do is just, we just want to admire. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I was. I mean, like I said yesterday, you know, having a little, tripping a little bit and bumping up against somebody, that's the first step. Oh, excuse me, you know, like yeah. that guy at 7-Eleven up in uh, Singer Island. I'll never forget that. I mean, he had a he had a gri a death lock on that kid. You know, it was uh, this, uh, embarrassing. Well, these things happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, excuse me. Yeah, it happened. And then he wouldn't let go, which uh, really created <laughs> quite a scene there by the pickled egg counter. It was frightening. By the uh, smoked sausages. Now, now, th is this the same? <laughs> Is this the same cable company that has that? Uh, <laughs> you cracked yourself up. Well, you're not paying any attention, which yes, is good. I See, am. That's the good thing about this show. I know what I'm talking about, but I hear just because I don't comment. Yeah. See, at least I'm not like Stan. I'm not trolling on the air. You know, I mean, we joke about this stuff, but uh, Stan legitimately trolls on the air for young ladies. I hear that every day. Brown-haired, uh, brown-eyed young ladies in Broward. He's into brunette. And the only reason he says Broward because he's too lazy to drive all the way to Dade to meet him. You know, he wants somebody like uh, right down the street. It's a fact. It is a fact. He's trolling on the air. So all you fishing experts out there, wait till he does his billfish tournament. That ought to be exciting. <laughs> Now, what about this show that runs on... Body by Soloflex? Which local got access Madison? cable. Yeah, there's another one with some drag queens, I heard. Now, see, I'm, I don't know anything about that you show. The color with his Bible is on the front page, and he says to Jessica, I'm sorry. And he says he never cursed, as has been reported. And it also says, rather trails in ratings race. News, CBS drops to drops last. Drops to last. So it wasn't just that Dan was away in Russia. I think it was a poor choice to send Dan to Russia. Because all the right wingers who've been, you know, accusing him of being a propaganda spreader for the uh, Soviets probably got a lot of credibility now. In fact, I understand the rumor is John Broward's going to be doing the CBS <laughs> Evening News starting next week. That's, yeah, I heard that too. Did you hear that? Yeah. That John Broward and Mike Thompson are going to be doing the news. Yeah. Uh, John's going to do the big stories, and Mike's going to do the short ones. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. There's John Elway uh, hanging out with uh, Phil Simms again. Those two have been hanging around together a lot lately. Have you noticed that? <laughs> I'm serious. 
Save that picture of Elway, by the way. He's got more teeth than uh, Wink Martindale, doesn't he? This paper blinds me with I know, the colors. It's blinding. I got to put my sunglasses. The only newspaper in America that you have to have sunglasses <laughs> to read. It's frightening. Come, let me tell you. That's a dial tone. Hello. New format. All that's, you FM people who are desperate. That's fruitcake. Hello. Fruitcake. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Go to the next one. Hello. Or is this exciting or Go to what? the next one. You worked with Neil on WNWS. Who's this? If it's Mark Grega, tell him I'll talk to him. Uh huh. He was a board op. You, you were on in the morning. He was on in the morning. Who was it? She. Prescott, Prescott Robinson. Is this Prescott Robinson? <laughs> <laughs> no. Who is it? Tom Schaefer. It. Bo Diddley. Talk about Castro. Maybe it's Bo Diddley. Why? Ask for the friendly ghost. Yeah. Who is it? It's some lady. You want to talk to her? Who is it? I don't know. Who is this? Okay, wait a minute. I'll talk to her. Hello? <laughs> I can't. Who is this? Who is this? <laughs> she won't say. Mickey Dane? Oh, my God. They are. Kyle just died. Mine are almost as enormous as yours, Mickey. <laughs> I know. We've seen him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mickey Dane? I can't believe this. <laughs> you know that we saw... Wait a minute. You know we saw Stanley J. Cohen hopping through the atrium the other day <laughs> when, when, when you put a uh, spell on him and turned him into a giant frog? <laughs> then... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Then I saw this movie last night, uh, this really freaky science fiction movie on cable. And uh, what's the name of that actress? She was in Exorcist 2. You know who I'm talking about. about Invaders from Mars. Invaders from Mars? Is that the name of the movie? Last, last and night. she was eating this giant frog. And <laughs> you know something? It looked just like Stanley as it was going down. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> I used to do what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is old stuff. Exactly. <laughs> I think this is some kind of a new, like, shock radio. I've been doing this for years, and nobody paid any attention because I was on at night when everybody was asleep. <laughs> yeah. Why is Mickey singing that Screamin' Jay Hawkins record, I'm going to put a spell on you? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Why is that, Mickey? Oh, Mercury is retrograde right in the middle of Shirley's show. Well, that tells me a lot, yeah. Incredible. <laughs> well, it's always retrograde on Shirley's show. <laughs> see if you can put a spell on Shirley's numbers. <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, hang in there, Mickey. Okay, we'll see you on the phone. Okay, long-time listener. Bye-bye. Okay, there she goes, Mickey. She used to be on Waxy, too. Thank God for her she got off. These calls are great. Off I know. The air. See, we get all kinds of personalities off the air. See who this is. This could be uh, Rona Barrett. Hello? Neil does Hallandale. That's the movie. She's telling us about Jerry Witchner not coming to work We already night. talked about that. This. Witchner is a, you know, he's just a uh, wild, right-wing, neurotic uh, bigot. That's all. So that I'm not going to retract any of that because it's all true. I know him, believe me. I know him like a book. And his bigotry is legendary. It's unbelievable. How, in, in fact, when you look up redneck in the dictionary, you'll see Jer's picture next to it. <laughs> it's like Desi Rue. I mean, a man is, it's incredible. Uh, does he still? Although we saw the new numbers for May. <laughs> By the way, uh, if, if uh, Craig is listening, we don't knock anybody on the air, Craig, but uh, don't tell those people in the audience we're making the numbers up because we give them accurately. We don't knock. <laughs> Craig told some lady on the air at 3.30 in the morning, we had a report from one of our spies right. that, uh, oh, don't pay any attention to those numbers. They're just spreading rumors. Those are only trends, and they don't mean anything, and the book won't be out for another month. Trends. Well, they're, you know, it's, it's two-thirds of the book. That's right. They're numbers. We didn't it's, just make them up. They're it's indicators. Re it's research. Strong indicators. And, boy, I'm telling you, those nighttime numbers... Talknet beat Jerry. By four to one, almost. Yep. Yep. Minuscule. Jer. <laughs> See, the problem with Jer's audience, they're all dying off. That's the problem. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Does he still drive? I mean, you know the people who listen to Dr. Bernard? <laughs> Their grandparents listen to Jer. <laughs> the gray ghost? Is he still I don't the know. Ghost? You don't care? I don't know. These were great calls. I really enjoyed taking these off the air. Oh, in other words, uh, that's it. Well, no, I'll take Well, we more. do have to do a break, that's true. And then when we come back, you'll do some more. Okay, and I can tell my story? Or not, as the case may be. Well, when you get through, when we exhaust all of these celebrities, <laughs> then perhaps we'll have time before the show ends and Stan comes along. Now, if Stan takes calls today, could you see Stan doing this? No. No. 
No way. No way, Jose. Kyle is thrilled that we're he doing this. He is delighted. Well, I, so I happy. felt we owed him something because yesterday he was at the end of his rope with the major. True. And I don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, Stan, you know, it says right on the log here, you know, what the spots are. You can tell how many breaks you I mean, is it complicated? Of course not. Can't follow. Oh, I made it in broadcasting? Look at that. Look at that. Here's a big article about uh, indecency, you? radio sound, and FCC's fury in this week's broadcasting you magazine. You and Gary. Gary Lawrence? Gary Lawrence. Oh, we both made this, huh? Oh, Other morning people may not offer quite the same degree of shock, but there are those who seek and profit from controversy. James Moby Carney on KEGL-FM Fort Worth has been quoted as saying, I pick on ladies, I pick on gays, I pick my nose, I pick on fat white guys, rednecks, and foreigners. Well, that sounds like Stan Major. Listeners in the Miami area have complained to the commission that WINZ FM's Neil Rogers... How do you like that? Boy, are they ahead of their time or what? All right, let's hear it for Broadcasting Magazine. WINZ... Oh, is Peter Bulger's in the building. It's going to be coronary time on the FM. You betcha. Listeners in the Miami area have complained to the commission that WINZ FM's Neil Rogers degrades women, maligns the Pope, is racist and anti-Semitic, one writer said Rogers called one woman an old fart. Uh-huh. Only one? Yeah. We called a lot of people old farts. Uh -huh. And you know what? Every one of them we called that was exactly that. A lot of them were men, too. Now, where's about Gary Lawrence? Is that in here later on? Whose picture is that? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Gary Lawrence, general manager of WYNZ-FM. Uh -huh said Roger's style is far removed from Stern's, but not so far removed that he cannot be, in Lawrence's words, insulting and controversial. He also noted that Roger's is the number one talk show in South Florida. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And the rest goes on about uh, that simpleton up to the Carolyn Fox in Providence. Oh, that's is, who she's that just is. a potty yeah. mouth uh, idiot. Howard Stern clone. Yeah, exactly. She went to, to class to copy Howard Stern. Studied his tapes. Yeah. Brilliant. Really good. Quello lays it out. Former broadcast station manager and current FCC commissioner James Quello. He's the one that put all that dead air on WJR years ago. Touched briefly on the FCC's indecency policy during a speech to the Broadcast Promotion and Marketing Executives Honors Lunch on June 13th in Atlanta. The commission is caught in a crossfire, he said, between First Amendment purists and a growing pubic public outcry mm. for action against indecency on the air. The FCC, he asserted, is not on any kind of a Salem witch hunt to exercise evil disc jockeys or lewd students, and we're not creating a new law. We're trying to enforce an established law, he said, a law made difficult to enforce because of narrow interpretations of past FCCs. We are, he said, just reinterpreting the Commission's legal precedent in a broader, more practical way. Personally, he said, as a strong First Amendment man, this gives me some problems. But he said that the FCC's action was a response to a growing outcry citing 20,000 complaints and not three or four. Now, you see, that's a lie, okay? Yeah. They had 20,000 complaints la or letters last year, but the overwhelming majority of those had nothing to do with indecent speech. Those were letters from listeners who were complaining about signals being interfering or, or whatever it might have been. I mean, there were dozens of different subjects, and only a small minority of those had anything to do with indecent speech. At the start of that article, as a matter of fact, there's a breakdown on the actual numbers out of that 20,000. Most of them were television. Yeah, complaints about uh, programming on television. You know, television. it's interesting. They did that segment on the Today Show. They had Diane Calori again and the guy from the ACLU. Mm -hmm. And Maria Shriver was doing the interview with her. There's something wrong with her jawbone, man. She just, <laughs> her, I'm telling you, her face is not all there. Part of it's missing. I think well, Arnold, you were married I think to the Arnold guy that has she's pulled it off, to. Mr. Muscle. Can you imagine laying underneath Arnold? But it's interesting. They kept talking about that. radio. That's I right. heard it. Oh, okay. They kept talking about radio. as They never at any time indicated the FCC ruling has anything to do with television, which, of course, it does, allegedly. But allegedly. it's obvious, allegedly, but yeah. it's obvious they're going to look the other way. And uh, isn't this interesting? In May, after the interest of the public had been stimulated by the publicity given the commission's crackdown, the commission received 272 letters regarding obscenity, indecency, and profanity involving AM and FM stations and a category headed AS, all services, including television and cable. The total was 357. Yeah, after they stirred everybody up, that's what they did. They invited. So if after they stirred everybody up and, and, and got public response, you can imagine what it was like uh, six months before that. Hello. Hi. 
Yeah. Welcome to Talk to Us Off the Air, WYNZ's public uh, service. This guy wants to know if you know what WIOD really stands for. <laughs> Tell us, sir. We insist on douchebags. That's pretty good. <laughs> Not a bad okay. call. Who was that, Mike Miller? Yeah. Okay. Hello. Thanks a lot, Mike. Hi. Hello? Nobody there. It was Mike Anthony, I bet. Yeah. Hello. Ah, it's fruitcake again. Get him off of there. Will you give it a rest already? <laughs> Go call Ron Sack. He needs the call. It's the and you're not supposed to talk to him either, by the way. It's not my fault. All right, if Mark I didn't talk is to listening, him. by the way, that's twice already. I didn't speak to him either time. Yeah, that's the famous excuse. <laughs> what are you pointing at Kyle for? He's got nothing to do with okay. it. Okay, boy, you're looking, glad. You're looking for somebody to blame, aren't you? <laughs> boy, boy. He's glad he has nothing to do with this. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. It's Bernard Meltzer. Yeah, it's Bernard get Meltzer. Get lost, my good friend. That was a roll of yeah. today. He's doing something obscene with a herald, I can tell. Boy, these calls. Hello. Incredible, sir, as they it's, say in Pompano. It's Mr. K. Get him off of there and don't dignify him by <laughs> using him that name. Hello. Mr. Fruit would be much better. We're going to have to take a break in a minute. Yes, here. it is true. Is what true? Uh, Neil did make a movie, Neil Does Hallandale. That's yeah, fact. right. Get Hello. Here. Yes. Neil does Vegas. This is Glenn. Two things. Number one. <laughs> that, that, that marvelous president we have. Yeah. Uh, oh, how we almost forgot about her in the midst of all these goings on here today. Yeah. And this guy sitting over here, oh, he's pushing the numbers, needs those calls. We don't need any calls on this show. We don't care if anybody calls. Look at that. They're all calling now. We mm -hmm. don't care. As we continue to break new ground, you don't call it when I come back from vacation. <laughs> I'm going away again. And take the calls off a the long air. Time. No other talk show okay, does here that. Okay, here it is. Here's the every Wednesday we wait breathlessly. Those of us in the business, we wait with bated breath for the Wednesday Linda Thornton radio column in the Miami Herald, don't we? True. Now, isn't it interesting? Was it two days ago that we got the? It was Monday. Two days ago, Monday. if my memory is correct, that the Arbitrans came out. Correct. And, of course, nobody anywhere in the country pays any attention to Birch, because Tom Birch, of course, some of, some of the people feel, pulls the numbers out of a hat. And uh, the Birch survey is still uh, questionable at best, because all those little prepubescent kids answer the phone at night. And, uh, oh, yeah, we're listening to uh, Power 96. And they're making scratching sounds on the phone and on each other. Yeah, he rolls the dice and comes up with the numbers. And uh, so far, um, you know, he's rolling uh, snake eyes. Anyway, there's nothing in Linda's column about the uh, Arbitran, right? But which came out Monday. But there is another one of these listings: the Birch Top Ten. Now, if she were listing Birch Beer Top Ten, <laughs> that would be more exciting, like they have at Steak and Shake. Of course, we know that Steak and Shake is going out of business because Mike Miller told us that, and it must be true. <laughs> the steak and shake are no fools. They're not going to come to this market. Even Crystal won't come to this market. No. You notice that? Can you blame them? Well, there's nothing like going to Tampa and going through Crystal and just opening the trunk and say, fill her up, you know? I know, I know. With those I greasy agree. little burgers, that's great. When you're depressed, like if you have a bad show, like after Ricky Ticky leaves Waxy every day, <laughs> he should have a chance to drive right through Crystal every day. <laughs> He's probably got to go through Fuddruckers up there. It's right near their studios at Waxy up there where the turn is on Sunrise. Right. Am I right? Yeah. Federal Highway? Absolutely. And uh, one thing about Fuddruckers now, there's one in my neighborhood, and I finally did get to go there. Well, first of all, I mean, talk about standing on line for an hour and a half to get a hamburger. How good can a hamburger be? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it can be sensational, but to wait for an hour and a half? I can't believe you had to wait. For oh, and you wait for a lifetime. There's the one in my neighborhood. When you get it, it tastes good, but about three hours later, your stomach is doing the Mexican hat thing. <laughs> oh, talk about making a mad dash. Really? After you eat there, you want to stay very close to home for a few hours. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Or to a place where they have a very readily available facility. In fact, for a lot of you people over there, a lot of the prunes in the audience who haven't had a good movement in a long time, head for that place because, boy, within a couple of hours, it'll be an explosion. It'll be like an earthquake. But anyway, here's Linda with the top ten Miami-Fort Lauderdale stations in Birch. And to give you an idea of who answers the phone, okay, what do you think's number one? It's always Scratchy, w scratchy, always. scratchy. WPOW, Power, Powerless 96, yeah. 10.4 share. They got a 10.4 share like I've got an 87.3. In fact, I may be closer to an 87. You know what I'm saying? 10.4. Then life. 
with a 6.1. And it's always, there is not one AM station in the list. Never. Not one. There never and is. And that's because all these little kids answer the phone. Here's Hot 105, and we know that nobody listens to them anymore. They're dying. And Joyless 107, <laughs> and the EDR, and GTR, and uh, Kiss, <laughs> and Waxy, and Magic uh, 102.758. And that's it, from a 10-4 down to a 3-6. In other words, what Linda's trying to say is that AM radio is dead. Of course, we know that Linda's listening here right now. This is what she And at the bottom to. of the column, it says Linda R. Thornton will be a guest host on Neil Rogers' show from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tuesday on WINZ, 7.90 a.m. No, <laughs> no, no, it, no, they know where we are. It says 9 Oh, they know. This is right. not the Sun Sentinel. Right. 9.40 a.m. Her guests from 10 a.m. to noon will be radio program and operations directors... Peter Bolger of Zeta 94.9 FM, Bill Tanner of Power 96 WPOW FM, Rick Shaw of Waxy FM, and Alvin, Alvis, Alvis from the Presley, <laughs> Alvis Presley, <laughs> nobody can pronounce Alvis. That. WTMI? Alvis Shiraus. I don't think we can say that. Mm -mm. Of WTMI FM. No one ever does. For all these suits in our audience. <laughs> from noon to two, her guest will be FM morning DJs Greg Budell of Gloves 94. <laughs> Sonny Fox? <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. Was that part of the deal? Sorry. What are you trying to do? Give me a change my mind about going on vacation? <laughs> Sonny Fox of Y100? Then and dying. Gene Cashman and Jeff Chase of Zeta? Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Sonny's been dying to talk on this show. American Airlines, please. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny's the only way Sonny can get on this show. Call my travel agent immediately. <laughs> Sonny is going to be in the studio. Far as I know. Is he Maybe going to bring he'll... that banana mouth with him? <laughs> Come oh, along, Sonny. God, are you, you too? Serious? Come Sonny along. Fox is going to be in this studio, sitting in two of these chairs. <laughs> The invitations Boy. are very clear. You people are to come alone. You're the only pe the only people listed in the Herald are going to be admitted into this studio, except for Ricky Tiki, who's going to be on the phone. On the phone is fine. Is that true? Yeah. Why is that? Too busy. Oh, like Carlos, <laughs> he's too busy. Well, isn't that interesting? Carlos is too busy, and Ricky Tiki is too busy. Now. You know, <laughs> I don't want to plant any ideas in your mind. But we'll put three and one together. Exactly, and come up with six and a half. Mm-hmm. Which is what they wish they could come up with in the book. <laughs> Powerless 96. Man, uh, you know, Tom Birch, if you're listening, you know, why do you take calls with those six-year-old kids who answer the phone, who can't even speak English, who have no idea what you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the Birch Report. Yeah. You know what I love in the Birch Report when you go down hour by hour and there are stations like 50,000 watt stations that have zeros, you know, like, and then the next hour they have like a seven, yeah. a seven shear. You know what it's like? Remember Paul? Yeah. Years ago. It's like Paul. Why don't you just tell him no request today? That's all. Very simple. Put your foot down. Be a man. <laughs> like me. Okay, my watch is sliding down my wrist. Okay, a macho 11, man. A macho man like me. With only one limp wrist. It's 11 before 2 at WINZ. We'll come back. Ajax Rent-A-Car helps you get where you're going to on time. This airport track. Because I learned my lesson. I cashed my paycheck, and I took a couple of bucks out. And I deposited the rest as cash. And thank goodness, Mark on the slip deposit as cash. Okay? I sent out my checks, American Express, my car payment, and FP&L were three of them, which are three of the most important on your credit report. Yeah. And they sent them all back uncollected funds. I don't understand anything that I'm talking about. You I never saw that show? <laughs> I mean, to hear it is one thing. To understand it would help a little I bit. I don't watch those shows. Good. Yeah. Thank yeah. goodness for that. Well, I knew there was something positive he had going. <laughs> anyway, in the ads and TV Guide, there's a guy and there's a girl in the ads well, that's for the new dating start. game. And the guy is Lee Gillette. That was all I wanted to tell you. The guy is you Lee Gillette. You mean we waited almost four hours for that? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so if you want to see what Lee looks like, folks, look in your TV <laughs> or Guide. Or if you want to hear what Lee sounds like. Sixteen phone calls in a row. <laughs> With Neil Rogers on 94 W-I-N-Z. Play the one about no Glen Hill interruption. Lee was in here. Lee was in here before with his girlfriend. She said she met him in a watermelon patch. I oh yeah, and they do it to me all the time. You're wrong. Yeah, I should do a show on Dan Rather today. Joanne but, uh, wants Glenn to know that Bill from WIOD is waiting for his Bill McQuaid. Oh, 
Oh, my Ooh, now, if you God. call him and then you come back on Stan's show, we could have perhaps one of the biggest pieces of news. This could be some of the hottest gossip <laughs> in the history of mankind. Well, will you just sit Lee there? has got to cut a new promo that says, Now, one rumor in a row <laughs> <laughs> on the Neil Rogers show. Would that be great? <laughs> Who said Are you listening, Lee? Now, Lee's on the air. So that means he called the PD's office. You're looking for me. Oh, boy. Um, this could be something heavy duty. There? Maybe they got a job for you. Yeah, will you sit there while I call him? Just sit. Well, I said where? Just, you know, across the desk. While I call across the guy. Across the desk? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah, just sit in the office. Well, what does that mean? I have protection. to be... I don't yeah, know. He wants me to play. I want... Got to get a witness by Marvin Gaye. The guy Gay starts yelling at him. Uh, <laughs> he'll handle For what? I don't know. For what? Maybe we helped to get the guy a job. Yeah. Or maybe we got him fired. Maybe you got him fired, not yeah. me. Yeah. Maybe Let's they want to play a softball game. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Why would they call me? Well, we only play hardball here at WIN. Boy, is that okay? the truth. We want uh, you guys in our business to understand that. We only play hardball. Yep. None of the soft stuff for us. That's right. And we furnish the balls. Okay. <laughs> that having been said, <laughs> that having been said, that's going to do it for us. But stick around, because after the news, we're going to kind of segue into the Stan Major show. We're going to start him off. He always is begging, you know, for something really juicy to start off the show. And I have a feeling that today is going to be the day. We're going to have rumors that haven't even been invented yet with people who haven't even been born yet. 